Hello everyone, welcome back, KJ4YZI, Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, and I got a brand new series for you here in 2025. Not a new video series on my channel, I've done this about eight years ago, but man, things have changed, right? We got all kinds of tens of thousands of new people in the ham radio that haven't even seen those videos. We got some privilege adjustments on the bands lately in the last how many years? We got some new antennas and radios. I'm going to give you a real world scenario on each band. I'm going to do all the HF bands first, then I'll go into VHF, VHF, and higher. And I'll show you what you would expect. I've been doing this 23 years. I'm not the biggest expert in the world, but I can tell you, I've worked all of these bands mobile. I've worked all of these bands at home. I've worked all of these bands with homemade antennas and store-bought antennas. I've worked all these bands QRP portable. I've done digital phone. I've done uh, satellite. I've done all kinds of stuff on these bands. So I'm gonna tell you what's a good time of year, when's a good time of day, what you can do, a simple calculation on the size of an antenna so you can make your own dipole, stuff like that. We're going to start with 10 meters. I'm going to reference World Radio League because I have the band plan on there and a logbook going and show you what I've done. And we're going to start with 10 meters and show you just what you can do. Work the world on DX as a newly licensed technician class operator with even a simple $150 radio and a homemade antenna. You can talk all over the world. So let's get into 10 meters. While I'm referencing World Radio League, it's a good opportunity to tell you there is a 20% coupon code for any plan that you subscribe to on World Radio League. The code is ERICWRL. Use that to save 20%. Guys, I made a whole video on World Radio League. This is the new era. There is more than just logbooks. This is spotting, parks on the air, activations, analytics, logbooks, contesting, leaderboard, community chat forums, and so much more. World Radio League, I am a lifetime member. This is going to be, this is what ham radio needs. It's very refreshing. Use the code ERICWRL, save 20%. Now, I have this same band plan poster on my wall. And if you hit me up at Orlando Hamcation while I'm out there booth at World Radio League for a couple hours, I might be able to get you one of these in paper form. But you can purchase this band plan poster right here on the link and buy one of these and have it shipped to your house. Really up to date and modern looking. I love it. Now, we're going to start with 10 meters. The entire 10 meter band spans 28.0 to 29.7. Okay. As a technician class operator, you were authorized from 28.0 to 28.5. And looking at this chart, from 28.3 to 28.5 is your novice technician voice. So that's where most of your meat and potatoes is for your single sideband activities, upper sideband on 10 meters. Okay. And down here in 28.0 to 28.3, you have CW, RIDI, and DATA. That includes FT8, FT4, PSK31, Domino X, Hell Schreiber, PSK63, uh, Thor, Throb, MFSK144, Olivia, Contestia, all those digital modes that people don't talk about. I have a whole series on those. You can check those out in my channel. And keyboard to keyboard live chat over 10 meters is possible down here. PSK frequency is about 28.120 or Morse code or RIDI. So that's right here. You get all this. Can you work the entire world from 28.3 to 28.5 on phone? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, if you're an advanced or a general or an extra, you have entire portion of the band from one end to the other. Okay. Um, from here, I'm going to give you some ideas. From here, 28.5 and up, you need to be a general, but there's a lot of activity all the way to 29. Point zero, which where AM starts, okay? And I've noticed that a lot of the DX stations will be up above 0.5. So it'll be 28.585 or 626 or, you know, up there. Always scroll up. A lot of people don't do that. They sit right here on 28.4. There's a lot of DX that's up here, but you have to be a general to be in this portion of the band. Now, AM, which is not on here, 29 to 29.2. I've been on AM before, a little challenging, but there's there was AM groups back in the day. I talked to some guys in Greenland and Iceland. They were on every day, and somehow the band was open right there, and I would talk to them. This goes back about five, six years ago, but AM 29 to 29.2. And remember, on most HF transceivers, like a 7300 or a, or a FT101 uh, or you know 100, most every 100-watt radio that does AM will only put out 25% power on AM, mostly. Okay, there's some that don't or, you know, that put out full power, but my 7300 does 100 watts on all bands, all modes, but AM it does 25. Okay, just remember that. Now, from 29.3 to 29.5, 
that's a section right here for satellite downlink. Not as popular as satellites, ham satellites that do VHF uplink, UHF downlink, right? But there are some satellites, if they're still in commission, I'm not sure, that you would upload or uplink on UHF or VHF and downlink on 29 megahertz. 10 meters. I'm not sure, but that's the satellite downlink section here. But then you get to 29.5. Now that's where your FM starts, right? And FM simplex and repeater inputs from 29.5 to 29.6. I have been in my Ford Escort with a Ushan UV950P back in the day. Did 10 meters FM only. And I used to work South America and Africa. And um, a lot of guys in Africa use 10 meter FM, believe it or not. I mean, I've made a lot of contacts over the years of 10 meters South Africa. Um, um, Qatar, other areas, right? I'm not, I'm not too sure where, but I've talked to a lot of people on in DX on FM, believe it or not, Costa Rica, Mexico. So 29.5, 29.6 is FM simplex. Then you get 29.6 to 29.7. That's your FM repeater outputs. Now the KQ2H repeater in or in in New, uh, New York is one of the biggest ones. That's like a thousand watts. Uh, linked to six meters and two meters as well. But imagine you being in Arizona with a 10 meter radio that does FM talking through the 10 meter repeater in New York to a guy in South Africa. Wouldn't that be freaking cool? It is. I've done it. There was also, there's a big one in Tennessee, I think, and one in Texas. There's some 10 meter repeaters out there and you could use those like beacons too. If you go on 10 meter in the FM section, if you're not a general or advanced or extra, you can still tune up there and listen. If you hear that repeater in New York coming in at plus 40 or plus 60 over nine, which has happened, you know 10 meters is open, right? Um, there's some videos I have, uh, just type in 10 meter repeater on my channel. You'll see all kinds of videos of me talking on 10 meters FM, whether it's simplex or repeaters, even QRP in the front driveway years ago, you will see it. Um, so your repeater inputs are here and your repeater outputs are up here. Okay. So 10 meters, 28.0 to 29.7. But let me show you this here. Now I, a quick Google search leads me to West Mountain Radio, which is what I think I used in the original series eight years ago for a simple dipole calculator. It's so rewarding to make your own antenna, set this thing up with minimal real estate in your yard, and work the world as a technician. Guys, it doesn't get any more fun than that. So typically, 12 to 16 gauge wire, okay, you could use larger wire, which would be more broad banded. So I used to use back in the day some old when I worked at AT&T and DirecTV, I used to get old spools that had a couple hundred feet left of RG6, 75 ohm TV coax. It was free. It was it was big around. And I would tie the braid of that coax to each side of my ballon. So it would be pretty broad banded to go from one end of 10 meters to the other with minimal SWR. Whereas if you use 22 gauge wire, real small magnet wire to be stealth, it's going to be very narrow banded. So just keep that in mind. But you're going to need a one-to-one -one ballon. You can buy a one-to-one -one ballon and then play with antennas as we go through these videos and make your own dipoles. A one-to-one is simple. That means it's equal on both sides. It's a, uh, I mean, it goes on more than that, one-to-one. -one. I mean, if you wanted to make it off-center fed dipole, you'd use a four-to-one. Or if you wanted to use an N-fed or an un nine-to-one, 64-to-one. A simple one-to-one -one ballon. Look that up because I'm not going to try to explain what a one-to-one -one ballon is, but it goes at the feed point of the antenna. It is your feed point. And basically on each side, you know, a quarter wave on each side will become a half wave dipole. For instance, if I go to the calculator and I type in 28.400, that's right in the middle of the, the 10 meter sideband portion for technicians. <clears throat> there it is. The total antenna length is 16 and a half foot, roughly 16 feet, 5.8 inches. So that's each side is 8 foot, 2.9 inches. So you would measure 8 feet, 2.9 inches, evenly, exact, and tie one on, on this side and one in on this side with insulators at the end, positioned horizontally like this, and there is your half-wave dipole for 10 meters. If you wanted it for FM portion, you could see it's going to change a little bit. If you did 620, that's the repeater output of the KQ2H 10-meter repeater in New York. You can see now that it changed a little bit. It's only 15 feet, 9.6 inches, less than 8 feet on each side. Now, for 10 meters, if you made an antenna right here for, for this FM portion, which is in general or higher, 
you would you would have a little bit of a higher SWR on the sideband portion. So you want to cut this for in the middle. If you want to use an antenna for to cover sideband and FM, how about twenty eight point nine hundred? Okay, so now that'll be your center frequency, and you can drift up to FM or down to sideband with acceptable SWR if you have a decent gauge of wire, okay? So there you go. Now, on this site, I'm going to link this in the description. On this, you can see, though, that the idea is 16 feet for a half-wave dipole that you can make in your backyard in 10 minutes and get this feed point up about at least a quarter wave above the ground, which would be 8 feet, roughly, you can, I, I mean, I've worked the world with a magnetic loop antenna on a cinder block in my driveway eight years ago, nine years ago. It was an MFJ, and I was all over the world with this thing sitting on a cinder block. So keep in mind, you can do it. It might, You might not need to even get it four feet off the ground, but the higher, the better. Height is might. Remember that. So um, not a lot of room that you need in your yard for this, and you can roll this thing up and put it in a QRP backpack and have this thing portable, go to the beach and set it up or throw it in a tree and hang it at the campsite. Very easy to get on 10 meters, guys. Very easy. Um, if you go down on here, we'll reference this later uh, in other videos, but you can see they also have on this website, you know, uh, different generic uh, frequencies here. And, the you know, for example, 20 meters, a half wave at 14.3 uh, would be 32.73 feet from end to end. So half half wave, you know, quarter wave is 16.36. So that's getting a little bigger. But look up here at 160 meters. This is where it gets tricky. You know, 1.9 megahertz center of that band, 246 feet end to end. Now, that's going to take some strategy to get that thing up and some, you know, um, a really, you know, you, you want to get that higher above the ground than five feet. Trust me, it's not going to really be that efficient, you know. So the longer, the, the lower the frequency, the longer the wire, the longer the antenna. You, you never want to try to get a tuner and load up for 160 meters with 10 feet of wire. It's just not going to work. I see people all the time that have tuners that are like, this thing will tune a wet noodle and they'll throw a set of Christmas lights out that's eight feet long and they'll run on the tuner. Oh, I got an antenna. That's not what you want to do. Nothing's better than a perfectly cut, perfectly tuned, efficient antenna system. Anybody can comment below and tell me that I'm right. An amplifier will just get you more power, but if you're putting it into an inefficient antenna, it's not going to do you really that much good. You want to have a resonant antenna. Now, if you talk about multi-band antennas, different story. I'm talking about a simple one-band, mono-band dipole. Link's in the description. Let me show you recently what I've done on 10 meters. I'll use World Radio League here and show you my logbooks. I have one home logbook here that I use just for, you know, daily, just casual operating. Uh, and then I had the one here. I entered the 10 meter contest log and I didn't go too far. I went 36 contacts, right? So if you look here on December 13th, I made some contacts here. Look at them over at least 2000 kilometers or more. And then, you know, some DX here. You got Curacao and you got Trinidad, Tobago, some U.S. stations. But look, the next day, I got on with 100 watts and a wire, all single sideband voice. Um, right here, Hungary and Madeira Island, France, Costa Rica, um, right here, Dominica, Mexico, Argentina, Panama, a lot of state sides, okay? And these were all 100 watts, an NFED wire that I have. And I could have done the same thing with a dipole. It was open. And what's cool about World Radio League is I could see a map of what my contacts looked like, you know, um, during the contest. Okay. I could look at my stats and see I was making 47 QSOs an hour because I was knocking them out. So had I stayed on that trend, that's how many I would have had per hour. Um, the top band, 10 meters, because that was a contest. All single side band, my DX entities. Longest contact, 8,600 kilometers just with 10 meters, right? And if you go over here to logbooks and I go to my home logbook, you can see um, since I started using World Radio League on October 20th, um, you can see I was on all different bands, 30 meters and, and, and 24 megahertz and all that. We'll get to that. But you can see I was doing a lot of 10 meter FT8, uh, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, FT8 and digital modes here, PSK, Olivia. You can see that. It's cool about World Radio League. But, hey, 
It's a lot of 10 meter activity out there and you can see that I was clearly making contacts and if I would have stuck with it, really got on there and been die hard contest mode, I could have made a lot more. But that was between football and everything else that was happening that weekend with the grandkids. I made plenty of contacts on 10 meters just with a piece of wire and 100 watts. See that? So 10 meters is a daytime band. And I'm gonna tell you over the 20 something years I've been on 10 meters, it always seems that the best time of the year where you have these openings from sunup to sundown all over the world at minimum power, March, April, May, and June. Now you could talk on 10 meters all year if it's open. You never know when it's gonna open. There's not a penciled in line that says at 8.30 it's gonna turn on and at six it's gonna go off. Doesn't work that way. But always call CQ, even if it seems to be late, you never know where you're gonna have an opening. I remember years ago teaching somebody 10 meters and I lived in Sebastian about eight years ago at the old house and it was getting late. And I started, you know, he was local. I started teaching him, you know, let's get on here. You know, let's, let's play around here. And wouldn't you know it that we started talking and there were people from Colombia, Argentina, Europe, everywhere pouring in. We were on 10 meters until 2.30 in the morning. That is rare, but it can happen. I've done 10 meters mobile all day in my vehicle on FM mobile through FM repeaters. I've done 10 meters sideband, I've done 10 meters QRP. I've done 10 meter digital PSK 31 FT8. There's all kinds of action on 10 meters and typically it's daytime, but always think or always check. It could be open late at night and it's always usually the late, uh, late spring, beginning of summer, and then in the winter, you'll have some peaks as well. It was open this weekend all over the world. It was open today. It was open last week. 10 meters in the middle of the winter still works. But summer, late spring, early summer is going to be your best time on 10 meters. Now, one more thing. I put some links in the description below. Some of the radios that stand out to me that I've had, and I've made videos on every single one of these radios. The Radioddity series, Radioddity QT40, QT60, QT80, made videos on those. Great for 10 and 12 meters. Usually a 10 meter radio back in the day would have just 10 meters. The radios coming out nowadays, they have 10 and 12 with the option to modify for 11 by soldering in a resistor or moving a jumper. And I get on 11 meters on all my radios. However, President Washington, the new one, great radio. You can get 80 watts out of that. It does FM, AM, upper sideband, lower sideband. President Lincoln plus two, great radio again. AM, FM, upper side, lower side, um, not as much power as the Washington. The Radioddity QT80, that one is great, does 80 watts. That one gives you 10, 12, 10, 11, 12, and 15 meters. So you can upgrade into a general at some point and still have 12 and 15 meters. Great stuff. Those links are in the description and you can check out the videos on my YouTube channel. So last but not least, always call CQ. Don't ever look at the bands or charts, even on World Radio League, don't go by that. That's all solar uh, suggested data, okay, based on calculations of sunspots and indexes. You want to call CQ, okay? I've always called CQ, and after a few times, if you don't get anything, maybe the band is not open. But always call CQ, because one time we had a friend, uh, he was uh, talking with me, and um, I got off with him and I moved up the frequency and decided to call CQ. It was getting late. And wouldn't you know, 20 something people came back to me and they all said the same thing. We didn't know the band was still open. It's getting dark. We were just listening. I called CQ. Everybody came to me. So always call CQ on 10 meters. You never know where your signal will happen. And you don't need a lot of power. Anything from QRP level at 5 watts to 100 watts, you can work the world. There's your video on 10 meters. We're going to move to 12 meters next. Comment below if this was helpful to you. Comment if I didn't sound good and you never want to watch again. Unsubscribe button's right there. Just click it. You never have to see my face again. 7-3. Ham Radio Concepts. Is brought to you by HamRadioPrep.com. It's never been easier to learn about Ham Radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit HamRadioPrep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, HamRadioPrep.com.